Back in March of 2012, Concordia University in Ann Arbor had a conference, their fourth annual conference on spirituality and the arts, and their theme was mirror images, reflections on the arts and sciences. The idea of a mirror as a metaphor is a pretty old idea, the, the idea of the mirror being something that reflects the image of God, we hold the mirror up to the world, and we see signs of God's glory. I wonder if it's um, a bit dated now. Instead, these days it seems to apply better that we are examining the world less with a mirror and more with a microscope. Not so much to reflect God's glory as to examine and test and reveal every flaw. In fact, to be searching for evidence that God did not create the world. And we believe that all of nature reflects God. It reveals his divine power and majesty. So Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. And that's easy to believe when we look at like this one uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope, or pictures like this one, or this one. These are beautiful, and we can see reflected in that beauty our understanding of what God is really like. Paul says that the wonders of nature are so overwhelming that nobody has an excuse to say that they didn't know about God. In his letter to the Romans, he says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And uh, those who, who are disobedient to God have no excuse because what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. His invisible attributes, his power and divine nature, have been plain ever since the creation of the world in the things that God made. But if we examine the world more closely, what do we see? Instead of using a telescope to examine the distant star systems and their beauty, what if we instead use a camera or a microscope to see this world up close? What does hunger tell us about God and his world? What about, what about floods and the devastation that suddenly comes upon an entire communities? What about earthquakes and the, and the disease and death that followed them in Haiti not long ago? What about War. War that involves not only adults and all the grief that that brings, but now even children. And this is not simply a, a modern problem just in recent years, but for centuries. Century after century, we have had signs in the world around us of the brokenness of God's creation. If people look at this to see uh, what God is like. Even in our society that is blessed with gifts of invention, with natural resources, with freedom, with abundant food and drink, and, and space to live, even here in this nation, we still see that our society is broken down, families are divided, even justice itself is, unjust, some, is unjust sometimes. If people look at this world to see and understand God, then what kind of reflection do they see? Some people examining the world might conclude that God is weak, that God doesn't exist, or that he exists and he doesn't care, or that he's evil, as they see all these terrible things happening around them. What is the true reflection? Is it the lovely scenes from nature? Or is it the terrible scenes of life? The disaster, death, and suffering. What is the, the real picture, the real reflection of God? Of course, this is what we would call the ultimate image, the ultimate communication of the nature of God. John called Jesus the Word made flesh, so that in what Jesus does and says, we would see most clearly uh, the Word about God. 
and the word of God. He is the perfect message about the nature of God. And what do we see in Jesus? Well, as Jesus told Nicodemus, it was necessary that he would be lifted up so that he could draw all people to himself. It was necessary that he should die so that he could live and we could live with him. But if this is a reflection of God, if we see God's love in the suffering and death of Jesus, then this also is a reflection of God. Here it is not just Jesus' suffering, but the cruelty and uh, the ugliness of man's hatred of the Roman soldiers who are torturing and, and beating him. And yet here we see Jesus' submission to that. And in that we see God's love. And if this is a reflection of God's work among them, then so is this. The mockery and the accusation of Jesus' enemies. When people, when people called Jesus' names and cried for his death. Again, here we see how Jesus suffered for us as he endured that. But if this is a reflection of God's work, if this sin that others commit is a reflection of God's work, then so is this. is what is called the Piss Christ by Andre Serrano, a famous work of art in which he photographed an image of Jesus submerged in a jar of urine. And this is also an example of Jesus' enemies mocking him. And yet we see Jesus came and died for this artist also who did this. We began by asking if art and science can still serve as a reflection of God. And these days we might be tempted to say no. Science has been used by people who no longer want to glorify God by understanding his creation. And they seek to prove that the world could exist without a creator. Art has been used to mock everything that Christian people believe in. Art has been used to, to celebrate uh, the corrupt and the decaying things of the world. It might seem as if there is no place for spirituality and the arts, for Christian spirituality and the arts. But... All of creation reveals the power and majesty of God. The words of Psalm 19 that we read earlier were not written before the fall. They were not written when the world was perfect. They were written after the fall when the world was already stained with sin. And yet, even the brokenness of the world reveals that there was once a better form a purer and holier form that we can still glimpse even in the brokenness of this world. And if the sick and sinful world can reveal God, then how much more can the image of Jesus reveal God, even, perhaps especially, when it is covered in blood, when it is spotted with the spit of his enemies, even when his image is submerged in urine? Christian people become dismayed when they see their faith mocked in art and, and science. And yet, we celebrate Good Friday and say that it was good because Jesus endured those things then. And in a small way, as we take up our cross, we endure them with him now. And the work of Jesus' enemies, those who mock him, does not diminish the reflection of Jesus. But instead, it reveals all the more how very great his love must be toward those who hate him. That while, they were, while we were still sinners, he died for us. And as we love those who mock him, we reveal that same love. We started with this image. It's easy to see God's glory in pictures like this. And yet, did you know that this is not really how this part of our galaxy appears? This is not, if you took a spaceship and you flew out to this part of the galaxy to witness this with your own eyes, you would not see it. This is a computer-enhanced image that they call a false color photo, which means that they take the various wavelengths of radiation in space and represent them with color 
so that we can see visibly something that our eyes ordinarily would not uh, not be able to detect. They're in the wrong spectrum for us. And yet this is not, although it's a false color photo, as they call it, it's not a false picture. It's just that when we use a computer to reveal unseen things, we see a glory that was hidden before. This is, in a sense, a false color photo. Can you see what's hidden here? What's happening in this photo? This is not just an ugly picture of hunger and suffering. This is a picture of mercy. In spite of the evil in this world that's caused by sin, here we see, just outside the frame to the right, believers in Jesus giving out food and sustenance, life to those who are starving. You see the little boy in the very center, he has a bowl of food. And these two hungry children in the front are reaching toward the person who is giving them food. This is a picture of God's glory. This is a picture of the tender love that he brings to a sin-sick world. There are many ugly images in the world, but even these may reflect the glory of God. What is it that ultimately reflects God's glory? It's not just the wonders of the heavens, but even in this world with so many corrupt and evil images, it is the eyes of believers in Jesus that reflect Christ as we love those who hate him and as we extend his arms of mercy and his forgiveness to all those who need him. That is when people will see Jesus in our reflection. Amen.